Inside Miami Tech is available to listen on Apple and Spotify podcasts. Hey, it's Coral. Welcome to Inside Miami Tech, the podcast where we tell the stories and expertise of leaders here inside the Miami Tech ecosystem. Today, we're joined by Jose Pujol, FIU computer science student and incoming software engineer at Google. And he was a, in it, the largest tech organization here at FIU AI lead. So thank you so much, Jose, for coming on to the pod. Oh, well, thank you for having me on. Yeah, I, yeah. I forced this man to come in here. I was like... Come out of his own will. Hey, you told me it was a passion project. I'm like, you know, yeah. Let me contribute to other people's passion too. <laughs> Gotta grow the community. Gotta grow the community. Of course. Yes, I love your shirt. By the way, it yeah. says. I was just telling her about this right before we got on. It says, "My shirt can learn." And it's a picture of a neural network. Oh my gosh, yeah. it's 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 that's so interesting. Only downside is I don't know who the PM was for this shirt, but <laughs> one of the cords sometimes uh, covers the R oh. in shirt, and then it doesn't spell out what you want it to spell out. So it says yeah. my shirt can lean. Yeah. Like, lean, yeah. <laughs> lean. Oh my God, Jose. We I wanna I wanna start off like so today's topic. I think it's a big topic. It's about like how like people's misconceptions about AI and all of that stuff. Like what is AI? Because everyone has so many different situations and stuff about AI. But you've worked with people and you've worked on creating AI models. But even before that, I want to get to the beginning. Like where are you from? Like how did you? How like where are you from? Where's your family from? Where'd you I grow was, up? I was born in Cuba and mm-hmm. I came here when I was eight. I've mm-hmm. lived in Miami my whole life since mm-hmm. I was eight. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I. I lived in Cuba, and I never had access to a computer. Or, I mean, frankly, our power went out every now and then, you know, so <laughs> oh my God, that power happened. wasn't even a, a consistent thing, much less Wi-Fi or yeah. Internet or any of those things. So I didn't get exposed to that till I came to this country. And I didn't even want to do tech when I was little. Really? I wanted to do aerospace engineering. Like, oh. I, when I was little, I mean, you can imagine the most science thing that I had is I lived in a very rural area, so I would look up and, like, I would just see stars because there's mm-hmm. barely, like, any light pollution or anything. And then I'm like, oh, I want to be an astronomer. I want to know. <laughs> and then, like, I started looking into space. And, like, I ever since, like, I was five years old, I always told my mom, like, I want to be a scientist when I grow up. So, mm-hmm. Like, I always loved science. And then when I came to this country, I found a little website called YouTube. Mm. And uh, that was just, you know, to my heart's delight, all my curiosity was just, like consumed in in Mm -hmm. it like i would just watch documentaries on black holes and like Mm -hmm. quantum mechanics and stuff and if you looked at me you would have thought i was crazy because i was in like fourth grade like looking at this stuff (laughs) you're like a real you're like the nerd that you see on the movies yeah 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 exactly (laughs) i was chubby back then too so i was i fit the whole character um and uh then as i was growing up uh my brother He's five years older than me, mm-hmm. and so he was in a bit, like, more of a mature say, and he also really loved science, and he told me, you know, um, instead of being someone looking through the telescope, don't you want to be the person that builds the telescope? And I'm like, Ooh. you know what? You got a good point about that. And mm-hmm. so I started looking into engineering mm-hmm. because it kind of combined the love that I have for math and science and all that, and then, like, some creative aspect. But Mm -hmm. you said you wanted to get to the beginning. I wanted to get to the root of everything. So Mm. I wanted to know, like, okay, um, the astronomer depends on the telescope. Mm -hmm. Then I want to be the guy building the telescope. And then whatever was below that, I always wanted to get to, like, the most deep fundamental level, right? Mm. Um, So that's why I wanted to do aerospace, and I really like rockets. And then fast forward to my junior year of high school, Mm -hmm. I transitioned to a different school Mm -hmm. that I was going to, which is SAS, SAS. uh, School for Advanced Studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's where I met a professor. His name is David Freer. Mm -hmm. And MDC, right? And MDC, yeah, Yeah. Kendall. Miami Dade College. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's where many of us, you know, started out. Yeah. And um, my brother was, he started doing CS at the time. Mm -hmm. And... Every time after class, I would stay talking to Freer. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we bonded really well because I really love technology. And I think, like, as a professor, mm-hmm. you see a student that's, mm-hmm. like, really enthusiastic about the subject. Mm-hmm. And, I, I mean, that's, like, every professor's delight, I guess. So, like, he, he 
you know, he wasn't bothered by me just going off on all the things that I really liked. And uh, he, uh, I remember, he, he wore a Tesla hat. So that's how I knew he was. That's how I knew he was, he was a, a special. We were both nerds together. You were a match. The that's stars I, aligned. Perfect. Um, and like you know, I wanted to work at SpaceX, mm-hmm. so like I was a big Elon fan at that yeah. point um, because I wanted to make rockets that went up, came back down, and land. <laughs> I thought that was super cool. So I started talking to him, and then like between him mm-hmm. and my brother, so he would talk to me about his Tesla, and then he mentioned AI to me. Mm-hmm. And this was back in like 2019. Mm, so you were uh, you were in it before the hype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> before it was cool and all. <laughs> Uh, (laughs) but um yeah we would talk and then it was me and a friend of mine ironically enough his name is also jose wow yeah (laughs) no there's i know a lot of jose's i'm sure you know a lot of jose's um and so yeah we were just both talking to him and then uh Mm -hmm. we both well me in particular switched to do computer science at that point mm-hmm. to work on AI mm-hmm. specific. So I switched to CS mm-hmm. to work specifically on AI. Mm. That was that was the thing. And I know you were you became like the in its community <laughs> AI leader. How how yeah. was that? That was amazing. That's that was the most fruitful thing I ever did at FIU. Wow. Yeah. And I started it a year ago from wow. from now because I started um, spring of 2023. Mm-hmm. So it was January of last year. Wow. And uh, at first, I just wanted to make, like, a community of people that were just excited about this so, like, mm-hmm. we could learn more about it. I mean, Chad GPT dropped November 2022. Yeah. Um, even before then, just so, yeah. you know, I don't want to plug yeah. myself too much, but doing it before was cool. Yeah. I had... Um, I had talked, I had interviewed Mm -hmm. uh, someone from OpenAI in October um, because I was, you know, like I was just interested like uh, what they were doing and stuff like that with Dolly and Mm -hmm. we were doing, me and my brother were doing a project that was doing speech to text Mm -hmm. uh, translation and we were using Whisper, which is an OpenAI model Mm -hmm. that they have. And so like we were already looking into it, it was on our radar. And so when Chad GPT dropped, I'm like, oh, this is cool. You know, mm-hmm. just another one of those the things. Another one. Five days later, I, like, it's I see it. To the moon. Yeah, everyone's talking about it. And I'm like, what's <laughs> going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so that was like the real blow up moment. Yeah. And then that semester when I came back, I'm like, okay, we need to do something about this. Because I see it being a really huge part of the future of technology. Mm-hmm. And I don't see like at, in it, which is the biggest tech community at FIU right now, addressing it in any sort of way. And mm-hmm. it's something that I wanted to do regardless, but mm-hmm. this just kind of confirmed it for me, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, I won't take the credit all for myself. Danny Ortiz, if you're listening to this, bro, shout out to you. Um, you know Danny. Yeah, we love Danny. Yeah. And so I went up to Danny because Danny and I had already talked about AI previously, and he was also very into it, and he mm-hmm. was VP of in it. Mm. at the time and so I asked him like yo um I want to start an AI community and I would love it if it's under in it because I wanted to replicate what in it did for mm-hmm. software engineering but for AI mm-hmm. because they share a lot of commonalities between the yeah. two disciplines but there's still a lot of key differences in there mm-hmm. and so I talked to Danny and Danny said bro you came to me at the perfect moment wow. and he said we are starting to experiment with this thing called guilds under in it, mm. which is essentially autonomous communities mm-hmm. um, that are underneath in it, like they're within in it, mm-hmm. I guess. And so I started the AI guild under in it, mm-hmm. which is like its own autonomous AI community, mm-hmm. but still a subdivision of in it, if you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, like, kind of like a mini club. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I started that January of last year. And then uh, there were a lot of people that, you know, helped me out uh, through it at the, at the beginning. Uh, a friend of mine, Izzy, that I met the semester before, because before I was the AI lead, mm-hmm. I was the lead code lead, mm-hmm. um, teaching people, like preparing people for like technical interviews and stuff mm-hmm. like that. 
the one who doesn't have is Gino. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. also where I'm at, Gabe. Actually, yeah, yeah, we love Gino. Yeah, 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 yeah. love him. Um, and so I met him there, and then uh, so I started with him and Jacob. If you know, yeah, Jacob. we know yeah, Jacob, yeah, yeah, bro. Jacob. Yo, <laughs> people, people thought me and Jacob had known each other for like yeah. years you before. You guys do then. look like that. Yeah. I met him last year, and no. that like through through doing that, wow. yeah, yeah, and we just became like really close because we saw each other every single day, and like imagine like we we're just talking about AI constantly, so mm-hmm. like we both shared like that same enthusiasm for it, so we just connected really well, and so I met a lot of really great people that helped me out to mm-hmm. make the community grow, and just like we all learned together, and it was definitely my. I, I would say where I grew the most, mm-hmm. both in leadership and in just technical expertise for AI. Because yes. I'd never done an AI project before. Wow. And I told myself, like, okay, the best way that I know mm-hmm. I can get myself to learn and do this is if I just have my back against the wall and I'm forced to do this. <laughs> Throw yourself into <laughs> Literally. the mix. Because when you assume a leadership position, then, like, people have expectations, right? And, like, even beyond that, I have expectations for myself. Like, I set the bar, right? And so one of the main things was the the club was new Mm -hmm. and everything. So people needed to learn Mm -hmm. quickly. And I needed to learn quickly because I needed to learn. (laughs) So that you can get. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Tell them. Um, And so that was just, like, a, and I was, I had, like, um, fully, I was fully online that semester too. So like, wow. I had like a lot of time to just go <laughs> in and, th- like, I would, I wasn't um putting like full effort into just like the regular semester classes. Mm-hmm. I was just like, all right, how can we grow the community? Mm-hmm. Like, what is, <laughs> strategy, you know, strategy plan. Let's go. Yeah, I was just like everywhere, and uh, yeah, that was that was absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. I went from not knowing anything about AI to like. Because I, I really do think, you know, imposter syndrome is, like, a really big thing in just the whole entire CS community. You have imposter and, syndrome? Yes, everyone had it, of course. What? what? Yeah. Um, especially, like, you know, then as well. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm, like, the AI lead. I don't know anything mm-hmm. about AI. Like, mm-hmm. these people, like, they put me, like, <laughs> they, they have such, like, high regards. But, like, this is inconsistent with, you know, <laughs> what I actually know yeah. about it. Um, and so... Yeah, then, like, big imposter syndrome. Yeah. But the best way to do that, uh, to, to get rid of that, I should say, is, like, just keep learning, just keep talking to more people, and, like, you'll start to see you're not the only one in that position. Yeah. There's everyone in that position. And just, um, I feel like that is, a, a lot of that comes from just mind games that, like, you play with yourself and, yeah. like, you know, just your mind plays tricks on you like yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say that's that's mainly, um, like, a mental thing. And what I would recommend is just have that childish curiosity to yes, just, like, that go nerdy in and curiosity. explore. Yeah. That's so good. Jose, so you were, like, just from space nerd to AI guy. <laughs> now we got we to gotta go on to the big topic. You know, yeah. people have such a misconception about what AI mm-hmm. is. Let's talk about what is AI. There's different, I guess you could say, like, Forms of mm-hmm. AI, mm-hmm. right? So AI stands for what? Artificial what intelligence. Mm-hmm. But AI is class as like the big overarching mm-hmm. umbrella, umbrella. Yeah. of many different things. So like some people would put uh, expert systems inside mm-hmm. of AI, which I'm sure you've never heard of expert systems because that's something we tried in the 90s and like we just never mm-hmm. worked. They were essentially like just fancy uh, if statements. <laughs> and we call it expert systems, guys, to do like medical diagnostics and stuff, right? Then there's a subsection of AI called machine learning. Mm-hmm. And then that's just using data to have machines learn from that data. So anytime you have... Mm -hmm. Uh, computer learning from data, it's uh, machine learning. Now, the thing is, in machine learning, I would separate it into what I would call, like, classical machine learning and then Mm -hmm. um, deep learning. So classical machine learning, to me, feels a lot more like the data science like, if you know Kaggle. Mm -hmm. Kaggle is more, like, on that data science stuff where, like, you take, uh, let's say, uh, an Excel spreadsheet, mm-hmm. and you try to run all these like algorithms on like decision trees or mm-hmm. um, linear regression, which is the most famous one. It's mm-hmm. just, let's draw a line that mm-hmm. fits the a better. Like that's called that's still called machine learning in some mm-hmm. respect. Then there's 
deep learning. Mm. And deep learning is the one that has been... Like, if you hear ChatGPT or whatever, ending on the news, like, it would probably be deep learning. So deep learning is specifically machine learning with neural networks. So neural networks being this right The here. shirt. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing is, neural networks are such a big field that they deserve their own category in and of themselves because <laughs> they so are... so many layers to yeah. this, man. And so neural networks, the idea for neural networks is that they can imitate what's going on in your brain because mm -hmm. ultimately what we're... I feel like uh, AI is the discipline of learning about learning. Mm -hmm. That's really what we're doing. Wow. So it's it's meta learning <laughs> meta in that learning. sense, right? Because um, you're learning about learning. And mm -hmm. so we see how the human brain learns and we see that you have these neural networks mm -hmm. in your in your head. And these neural networks in your head, they got these synapses and like mm -hmm. they got these activations and things like that. So we try to mimic that in a way where if you look at the architecture for the neural networks that we have today, they have these things called attention, mm -hmm. you know, like what I mentioned to you, which is, okay, what should we be paying attention to? And so we're very much trying to assimilate in some ways, not mm -hmm. always, but trying to replicate those neuro um, architectures that are, are already going on in your brain. Wow. Now, we have not successfully been able to completely do that, but, but it's a work it's, in progress. It's, it's, you know? it's on its way there. Yes. <laughs> And yeah, even in even in deep learning, there's many mm -hmm. different disciplines. Natural language processing would mm -hmm. be ChatGPT. There's computer vision. Mm -hmm. There's audio, uh, ASR, automatic speech recognition, mm -hmm. like that. There are um, like many different topics. Now there's diffusion models, which diffusion is diffusion models. That's Dolly and like these oh. uh, image models that you see, where it's like text to image mm -hmm. and text to video. I I even saw. Um, the other day, because I have a friend of mine, his name is also Jose David. Look at that. <laughs> Another, but, the third Jose. Geez, there's too many. <laughs> it's like the, the tenth Jose. <laughs> the Jose <But> algorithm. <laughs> he's um he's a musician, and so I asked him, like, yo, how do you feel about AI? You know, going into <laughs> music. And I showed him, like, a music video mm -hmm. that was completely, like, generated through AI. And the stunning part is, like, yes, it's not there yet, but I showed him version one, and mm -hmm. I showed him version two, and he goes, going like, up. That's version one? That's version two? That's like, crazy. That's wild. The main reason large mm -hmm. language models have like stuck through the most is because they've mm -hmm. been the most successful AI yeah. endeavors, yeah. you know? And especially, you know, like the big boom was with ChatGPT. We've had language models yeah, for a forever, while. Yeah, forever, yeah. It's just they never quite hit the mm -hmm. mark like that was. I would also say just like Sam Altman knows mm -hmm. what he's doing, yeah. you know, with OpenAI and like he knew how to market it really, really well. Mm -hmm. And yes, we had large language models, but this is one thing. I mm -hmm. <sighs> hope this podcast doesn't is not seen by any Google executives. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is public. <laughs> it's gonna be on YouTube, my boy. It's okay. Um, <laughs> so one thing that I don't understand about Google is like. They have all this really cool stuff that they just don't market very well. Wow. Or, like, they just don't, you know, like, propose that well. So Google were the ones that actually created the transformer architecture, which is what ChatGPT runs on. That was a paper in 2017 called Attention is All You Need. So they released that. Wow. They made a model called BERT, um, mm -hmm. which that was a language model, mm -hmm. but... Did you know about Burt before I just went? No. Right, like, no Bert? one knew about it. Yeah. Right? It was because people just mostly thought it's like, oh, this is like a research thing, mm -hmm. you know, and um, mm -hmm. they didn't, like, commercialize it all that well. They wanted to make, like, AI assistants mm -hmm. and things like that. I remember seeing um, when they did uh, the Google event a while ago that they showed, like, the AI assistant that you talked to. Mm -hmm. I forgot what that was, but, like, they wanted to do that. I guess the reason... OpenAI was the most successful at this because, like, they saw the maybe like the breakage point, the gap in the market. Mm -hmm. that they're like, no, we're gonna release this to the people. Mm -hmm. On top of that, mm -hmm. OpenAI has had some algorithmic breakthrough that they have not wanted to talk about, mm -hmm. not just in terms of performance of like the model actually works really well, mm -hmm. but also in cost and inference cost. 
Wow. Um, I was talking to, I went to an event, Google Dev Fest, the other day, and the guy was telling me, like, dude, it doesn't make sense. Like, even if you take all the GPUs and everything, like, mm-hmm. how can OpenAI keep up with the cost and the man of serving 100 million users that mm-hmm. they have for ChatGPT and stuff? Like, they have had some breakthrough in the cost of everything. So now that we know what is AI and how big the umbrella is, mm-hmm. what are some of the common misconceptions and what are the, the things that people are doing now that are, like, that, that's not really true to what AI really is? Okay. The common misconceptions about AI. Well... I would say there's, even now, a lot of people from the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. And I think what that can cause is, like, a lot of philosophizing, a lot of, um, you know, like, what if we get um, AI that... uh, It's just, like, philosophizing about things. And then the more that you do that, it's, like, the further and further <laughs> out to the future you go and, like, the further from reality that yeah. it is, that you miss the point of, like, what's right in front of you yeah. from trying to look so deep into the horizon that, like, you can't exactly look past. Mm. Um, this is one thing I, I remember that we talked to mm-hmm. uh, um, the other day, which was I feel like there's, with a lot of technologies, like, when you start to philosophize like that, like, oh, how does it look like in... Uh, a hundred years from now, whatever. I feel like there's a horizon. Whatever mm-hmm. you try to predict from there, like it's you don't really know, mm-hmm. right? The best way I read a Paul Graham article that was really good, um, called uh, "How to Do Great Work." It's mm-hmm. awesome. But Paul Graham talks about trying to get to the edge of the field, mm-hmm. and then you start to notice the gaps there, mm-hmm. because when you don't, when you're not. Um, in the field itself, then, mm-hmm. like, you can't exactly see those gaps. Mm-hmm. So people might be from the outside looking in, trying to see the gaps, but mm-hmm. those could just be, like, you know, like, they're not really the gaps. They're just gaps that, like, you're kind of making up in your mind, right? Mm-hmm. That's one big uh, source of misconceptions that I see, and that creates a lot of fear, mm-hmm. I would say. Yeah. Um, that people think, like, oh, you know... Um, it's going to take over all our jobs. and uh, It's going to take over the world. And there is definitely something to be fearful about that. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to... I'm not naive enough to say that um, that's not a thing that's going to happen. I think I was looking... Google mm-hmm. just laid off a thousand people this morning. But Whoa! <laughs> and so, but <laughs> one of, what I was going to mention is, like, they wanted to um, lay off, I think it was, like, 30,000 people or something like that, or a lot of people from their ads and sales team because they're starting to um, run AI models instead that mm. have equal or, like, better performance and, like, what they're doing. So, like, there's definitely things like that going on. I, w- I won't say it. Um, security is definitely, like, a, a big thing, but... Yeah. I feel like with the misconceptions, you tend to look at things... Mm-hmm. that aren't exactly a direct problem, mm-hmm. and then you ignore the things that are more of a direct problem yes. in some cases, right? Yeah, like, like for example, like I was reading the other day, and in July, Google came out with an article about their red team coming up with different sort of a, like tr- strategies to prevent some of like AI attacks, sort of mm-hmm. like some of like prompt attacks mm-hmm. or like backdooring, yeah. you know, data poisoning, exfiltration. Those are things that I didn't even know about <laughs> until I read that article. Yeah. But like the things that people are saying now are like, oh, we got to think about AI taking over the world. And like, what yeah. if it becomes sentient? Right. And I'm just like, look at the data poisoning that's happening there. You're not yep. even looking at that. Yeah. You're not even... Like, what, what is, like, other problems that are actually happening with... Yeah. What is another problem that we actually have to focus on with AI right now? Uh, with AI right now, hmm. another problem to focus on, let me see. Well, I'd say this is a problem that I definitely like to... And I don't know if I would call it a problem, but the whole thing with, like, the privacy mm-hmm. issue is... So there's no AI model that's running locally on your computer right now, I mm-hmm. would say. It's running on some AWS server in the back or Azure or mm-hmm. Google Cloud, like whatever it is in the back, right? Like, for example, I wanted, I keep a journal mm-hmm. that I do, uh, you know, every now and then. I, I've been doing it daily, but it's consuming a lot of time daily, so I'm going to do it <laughs> weekly. And um, I wanted to run Llama locally on my computer, mm-hmm. which is an open source mm-hmm. model that I can just get. But it takes, like, an insane amount of compute power for me to actually run that locally. So 
if I wanted to do that, I would have to run my very sensitive, very private and mm. personal journal and notes mm -hmm. through like a server in the back, which that's mm -hmm. not what I want. I want it to run locally on my computer. Mm -hmm. So I would say everything that you run is being run on some server in the back. And so they mm -hmm. do have all your data in that regard. <laughs> <laughs> like everything that yeah that's scary <laughs> your eyes just raised right there you're like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so everything that you input into the yeah, model like yeah. they have access to it yeah like it's probably running on something in the back and like of course they <laughs> most certainly have access to that and they're probably using that to retrain your model as well so yeah you know someone mentioned <laughs> someone mentioned something like scary to me but they said um Maybe what OpenAI does is they actually tailor your GPT to you. So, like, my chat GPT might be different from your chat GPT because they use all your prompts and everything that, that you know, you've said, and they kind of train and fine-tune it to fit you. <laughs> yeah, think about that a little bit. Yeah, and so that's, that's I would say the, the scariest things are the most subtle that you don't notice. That you don't even you know? notice. You're too busy philosophizing about whether it has emotions or sentience and oh, things like, like that. It, that you don't see, like, what's going on. And it's like, yeah, yeah, keep talking about whether it has emotions or sentience. Yeah. Let's keep mining that data right now. Let's keep making that money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. One of my guests the other day, he studying, he's doing a certificate in AI and ethics. Oh, okay. And one of the things he's he told me about is, like, how, like, the things I thought he was going to, like, be, like, philosophizing and stuff. But mm -hmm. he was actually talking about how even before we build something, we have to think about, the, like, the ethics behind it. Mm -hmm. Like, how to build software for good, not right. to exploit people. Yeah. And right now you just explained to me that data mining is a thing where you take people's information yeah. to make better models. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, <laughs> the data's got to come from somewhere, you know. I don't yeah. say it's just people People don't like to know how the sausage is made, I guess. That's the, yeah. what I would say. But, yeah, absolutely. Uh, actually, my um, I took data mining here with a professor. Her name is Ben Ahmed. And uh, she does research on AI and medical imaging and things mm -hmm. like that, which is really cool to, you know, like predict mm -hmm. um, whether you have cancer or not, things like that. Um, and I remember I was talking to her after class one time. By the way, if you know this, I like to talk to my professors after class sometimes. You know, like, oh. I really get the most uh, money out of my, uh, yeah. the worth out of, out of them. Like, we're, we're getting the, the nerdy, them. the nerdy, the nerdy kid, nerdy Jose back, yeah. is back in, back in the game again. Oh, nerdy Jose never left. Nerdy never. Jose just evolved. <laughs> <laughs> the nerdy just evolved. Um, and so, yeah, I was talking to her and like she he, she tells me, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, we we don't have any like ethical concerns about this because I remember mm -hmm. at this time there were these people that they wanted to stop or halt um, mm -hmm. AI research at the moment. I don't know if you remember that letter. Which that one? It was the one that was signed by like Elon Musk and like a lot of. Oh, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, don't, wanted, I don't remember they, that one. They, want, they yeah. were afraid like the dangers of like, you know, mm -hmm. steady progress and stuff like that, which I'm all about progress too. Like, I think the opposite of progress is stagnation. That's not what we need. Mm -hmm. But I do acknowledge that we do need some responsibility in yes. what we do, right? So I understand it um, from that side. And I think intentions is a really big thing mm -hmm. with uh with what you mentioned like we should do it with the best intentions in mind even with the best intentions in mind mm -hmm. we should make sure that there aren't side effects yes. of the best intentions yes. that you know end up being uh faulty it's like oh we want to uh reduce crime and things like that and like uh, you know you end up having like an extremely mm -hmm. uh controlling or like ai that's um, watching your every step and things like that. Yeah. So it's like, what are you willing to give up in mm -hmm. exchange for what? Yeah. So I think, like, your friend definitely makes a good point, but I was talking to my professor about mm -hmm. it, and uh, she's like, you know, I, I'm, like, reconsidering the field because, like, she was really, really scared about yeah. um, all the things like that, and she's starting, like, an ethics board and mm -hmm. stuff like that, FIU, yeah. um, for people doing that. So, no, I definitely think, as with everything, like, we should mm -hmm. be aware of it. Um, I don't know if over the summer you watch Oppenheimer. Oh, I didn't did. watch it. No? no. Okay. But so, I, I heard about it. I, I told my friends after watching that movie, I'm like, yo, CS majors could be the physicists of the 21st yeah. century, you know? Yeah, we, 
we bear a lot of responsibility yeah. and I, I don't think engineers understand that like the more I learn about being an engineer and the more yeah. I'm becoming an engineer I say a joke like the more I become an engineer the more I want to become Amish like I just want to <laughs> pack up to Utah no tech no Wi-Fi, nothing cause when you learn how the sausage is made you're like oh yeah. shoot yeah. <laughs> this is the reality yeah um, <laughs> you it can is come crazy. with me if you if you, if you know. <laughs> If Thank those you. Googlers, if, if they're doing too much, you just, just come pack up. We'll hopefully, Utah. <laughs> hopefully they ain't no solar flare, and then we all become all mess, you know, like, it'd be crazy. Um, but no, I think, like, there's, hey, even Sam Walmart has a ranch, you know, like, yeah. somewhere. And then he goes, I spend my weekends there every uh, yeah. every night. And then I'm like, yeah, weekends? Oh, he has, um, he's uh, he's one of those, like, doomsday preppers. Oh, really? Yeah, he, can, yeah, he prepares <laughs> and stuff like that. And I'm like... Kind of sus, homie. Like, <laughs> what you what doing, you, man? Yeah, what you doing? <laughs> this sounds like the start of a movie. <laughs> yeah, facts. Um, but yeah, I think that we should do it uh, responsibly. Yes. And and with the uh, with intentions, I feel like that's why. That's a, a really good case to be made by mm-hmm. open source people mm-hmm. that they like, well, at least like you can see yes. like what's going on. Like you can see the models like they'll always cite that. Oh, if you make it open source then people can use this for harm. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, like people use the Internet for harm for like all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the question is, like, does the good outweigh the bad is is what you would ask if you were going to make it open source? And I would say yes, mm-hmm. where like. Um, you kind of, I guess you could say, um, the word that I'm looking for is kind of like, you get curious people to actually go in and, you know, put their creativity Mm -hmm. on something like that. So like, for example, Linux is open source, Mm -hmm. right? And it is the, probably the best operating system Mm -hmm. in the world right now just because anyone can come in and tinker with it. So you, like, democratize it in that way. And so, like, you have AI not just in the hands of, like, Mm -hmm. like five people or something like that. You Mm -hmm. make it open source. It's out there on the Internet. Yes, it's a very powerful model, Mm -hmm. um, but you can tinker with it. Now, the other thing that I would say is a misconception with that is even if the model was open source, you couldn't run it. Mm. It is what I was telling you earlier. Yeah. I could give you GPT-4 right now. Yeah. It would be kind of useless to you. Yeah. Like, I could give you, like, all the weights, the entire model, the mm. whole architecture. Like, I could probably recreate GPT-4 for you, mm-hmm. okay, right? Or something of that caliber. And we have open source models that... Um, do actually go very similar in performance to it, right? Mm-hmm. But again, I, I think one of the big misconceptions is compute. Yeah. Like, people don't know how much compute this takes, bro. <laughs> this like, is a big baby. Like, it's not like this is going to run on your computer. So, like, one of the things that I love to see, mm-hmm. and uh, I guess, like, you're starting to see them now, but mm-hmm. um, downsizing the models of mm-hmm. it. Like, can we get the same performance with, like, smaller sizes? And, yeah. like, can we get this to fit on my computer mm-hmm. so that when I run things, it happens locally on my computer and on some server in the back where you're yeah. making duplicates of my data or something like that, Yeah. right? Like, can I run this locally? I think um, the people that I would bet to do that well would be Apple. Mm. Because They're Apple... They're very privacy-oriented. Yes. Yes. Um, and, you know, they have their things, but at least, like, their, their engineering is superb. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just recently released this framework for mm-hmm. building... Um, AI models on their hardware Mm -hmm. and they're uh, I'm really glad they changed from Intel to Apple Silicon because like Mm -hmm. they're making their own chips now and like they're running their stuff very very well so I think that if there was a company that would you know um, craft something to run like locally on your device and so it could Mm -hmm. be private to you it would be them but it's a it's a huge major engineering feat in order to do that Mm -hmm. because when you downsize the model like that, then you lose performance. Yeah, so there's um, a lot of, like, creative solutions that you have to yes. you have to make so we can make this happen. There, there's a lot of technical things that go into it. Like, you think AI <laughs> is one thing, but it behind is. AI, you have, like, a whole bunch of software engineering, a whole bunch of, like, silicon <laughs> engineers and, like, electrical engineers yeah, making the chips. Everything. Like, do you know Chris Latner? No. Okay, so recently he's making a company called Modular mm-hmm. that they're making a, a new programming language now called Mojo. I don't know if you're in Mojo. 
you can have a fire emoji as your extension. So you can do like, you mm-hmm. know how you use dot pi? You can yeah. do dot fire emoji. Wow. Stop. That's innovation right that's, there. That's innovation <laughs> but right there. It's essentially like a superset of Python. So it is built on top of Python. Uh, I guess you could say it's, um, it's supposed to include Python in it. But they're focusing a lot more on the hardware side. Like mm-hmm. people see AI and they're just like, oh my God, this is going to take over the world. This, mm-hmm. this and that. Like, Bro, bro. Um, <laughs> like a compute, bro. Like we can't. <laughs> we need, we need, we need creative solutions, especially yeah. now that it's open source. Now we, I, I think you, you were mentioning this, and I'm like, I want to pivot this conversation into something I've been thinking about. Yeah. What are your thoughts on, you know, people? People can have creative solutions to this because it's open source. What What are your thoughts about the AI startups? The AI start. The AI startups Ooh. and the solutions they're making. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll tell you this, right? There's uh, a lot of them here in Miami, a lot of AI <laughs> startups. <laughs> so uh, I'll tell you this, right? Um, I think the moment on that OpenAI Dev Day that mm-hmm. they released the GPT store, mm-hmm. like 90% of the AI startups got panicked because. <laughs> A lot of them is what we would meme (laughs) as GPT rappers, like prompt engineering, you know? (laughs) So, I mean, I ain't trying to... GPT rapper! That's what we call them, though, like... (laughs) You're like, I'm an AI engineer. I call it APIs all the time. Which, honestly, like, Mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. Like, it's just part of the, Mm -hmm. like, development process. Like, we use APIs for Mm -hmm. everything, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, they're great and they're useful. Like I'm not saying, yes, they bring value to people. And Mm -hmm. I guess this is what OpenAI wanted from what I've heard Sam Altman talk about, where they wanted to make like the core infrastructure for Mm -hmm. people to then like build on top of that. Yeah. So like the API is like that infrastructure that they wanted to make people build on top of that. So like, you know, they got that the result that they wanted but then they made a gpt store and now they're like that's like the app store for gpt basically yeah. where it's like oh um now instead of making your gpt wrappers on like some website that you want whatever just do it like right on chat gpt it's a platform now and we'll share the revenue with you mm-hmm. so now open ai what they have is they get a piece or control over mm-hmm. like all the GPT rappers and people have already made like three plus million like custom GPTs on the GPT store. And oh my stuff. God. So the AI startups, I mean, I think um, in 2024, you'll see which ones stick around and which ones don't. And mm. the ones that are going to stick around, um, they need some something to differentiate themselves from just being an API call. Mm-hmm. You need to, like I was, look, I will come out and confess. I've tried to build GPT rappers, but I I built <laughs> you, GPT you, rappers before. You were a before. GPT rapper. I was. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jose, and I'm a GPT rapper. Neural networks, everything. <laughs> no, but rapper is like you know how you rap your Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was just a joke. Uh, I thought you. <laughs> it was just a joke. I know, I know, I know. It was yeah. a joke, but I'm like, wait, does she know that I mean yeah, that a rapper yeah, yeah, yeah. or? A rapper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I'm having too much fun with you, man. <laughs> That's fun. So 2024 is the year that like you'll see them stick around, mm-hmm. you know. And I'll tell you this: like the ones that do stick around, they're really gonna stick around. Like they're mm-hmm. really gonna profit mm-hmm. because if you manage to get, um, like they're gonna get filtered out, and the ones that come out on the other side, there's gonna be like such a hole, or like there's gonna be like such a a uh, vacuum, I guess you could say, that would mm-hmm. be created. That, like, imagine all these companies, all these other companies die, right? Mm-hmm. And then that fertilizes the soil for the ones that stay alive mm-hmm. to live. Now, that's a beautiful analogy and all, but what I don't like is having just a group, like a small handful of people, to just have complete control over like all the AI that we use in our lives. Mm-hmm. That's why I like uh, open source. And who would have thought Meta? would be yeah, the open up. source, uh, like, out here. Like, Meta's been open sourcing, like, all their stuff, and I'm just like, Meta? Really? Like, yo, Zuck, I don't know what you're up to, but, like, <laughs> you know, I commend you, bro. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, there's um, I heard uh, Clement, he's the CEO mm-hmm. of a company called Hugging Face. I don't know if you know Hugging oh, Face. Oh, yes, I know Hugging yeah. Face. Did you hear my little speech at the end of... Um, 
of uh, Demo Day at Capstone? No? No, no, I wasn't yeah. there. Okay, yeah. They, uh, so uh, the professor for Capstone was talking about, like, doing open source. I'm like, bro, like, if we're going to do open source and, like, let's do it right, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, that's, um, instead of having just, like, we're only working with, like, this open source thing, like, allow me as a student to work on, like, any open source project, mm-hmm. uh, right? And then I mentioned um, Hugging Face to him as yes. well. So, yeah, I heard him talk about it, and he said if um, 2023 was the year of revenue, 2024 is the year of profit and stuff. So the, the AI startups, like, I'm telling you, the ones that stick around are going to be fine. But I think, like, 80% of them are not mm-hmm. <laughs> going to stick around. And all the ones that you see, like, around here in Miami. Bye-bye rappers. Yeah, bye-bye rappers. You know what I mean? Like, make a graveyard uh, for it. When ChatGPT released the GPT store, there was a website that you could go called Custom GPTs. Mm-hmm. I don't think you'll see that website. Yeah, there's very even much another enough. one called futurepedia.io. Yeah. There's a bunch of like oh, yeah, AI startups. Yeah. Ones, yeah. So they're gonna be gone. Yeah. It's so and sad. The other <laughs> thing too is like, you know, mm-hmm. they keep throwing money, 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 but like mm-hmm. at some point they're gonna wanna start asking for results. Yeah. You know, and like you gotta deliver at yeah. that point. So yeah, I don't know. I mean that's kinda why I wanna move to San Francisco. I'm like all right, homie. So, uh, what's the what's the play here? What's Let, the what's actually, it looking like? Let's actually make this happen. Let's actually make this. If we if you can solve that compute thing, you're, the compu- you're, you're solve the compute thing. Yeah, like, if you solve it, bro, it's gonna be a, a hundred billion dollar valuation. <laughs> <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of um, mm-hmm. a lot of the the ones that people don't mm-hmm. maybe don't pay attention to is mm-hmm. the startups that are working on hardware. Yeah. Like, there are some kids that... I say kids, bro. I'm a kid, too. Yeah. Like... <laughs> so uh, but they dropped out of... I think it was, like, Harvard or mm-hmm. something like that. It's always one of those. It's one and of those. The it's always one of is. those, yeah. They're always doing something. <laughs> no, but that's cool. They're, like, very ambitious people, right? That, like, they get bored in class and they want to do something cool mm-hmm. with their lives. I respect. Mm-hmm. You know? I, I relate. Um... Mm-hmm. And they're doing one called Mm Edge.ai, which they're, like, trying to, um, remember that transformer architecture I told you about? Yeah. So they're trying to put that directly on the chip so that it just, um, I think it's, like, a 1,000x or something like that improvement Mm -hmm. on performance. But this is a chip that you're going to, like, you're starting to see this a lot. You're already seeing this a lot. But, like, they are, um completely dedicated towards running these AI models. Wow. Yeah. So you're, you're going to see a lot of the improvements that are going to come from that. Because here's what happens. Like, mm-hmm. you have the architecture, mm-hmm. right? But um, if I wanted to match the performance of, like, some other guy's model, mm-hmm. I just train my model for longer. Wow. And, like, I'll probably do the same thing. What I have seen people say mm-hmm. where if you want performance uh, or, like, some, like, key difference, you need high-quality data. Mm-hmm. And I would say the biggest misconception with AI, again, now that mm-hmm. you think, is, like, every time I try to go and just, like, build a model, the first question I ask myself is, where am I getting this data? Yes. Data is the lifeblood of AI. Literally. It does not run just by, like, like abracadabra, boom. Like, no. you know, that's it. Like it I, I like to think of it like AI is a baby, and mm-hmm. it's a fat baby. And Alan, the thing it eats is data. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I mean, you just made me remember something. So, so Alan Turing mm-hmm. is, uh, he's uh, one of the guys that, uh, well, he's the founding father of computer science, pretty mm-hmm. much, like, um and so back then he this guy was doing AI lectures in the 1950s like Ooh. in 1949 he did like a lecture on AI oh, and he did all this like he was very ahead of his time he made a program to play chess mm-hmm. like back then I was like bro what but he said um why um why replicate the adult mind train um replicate the child mind and if it's subject to a correct course of education then you will achieve the adult mind so he's saying, why? Because uh, at the moment, yeah. a lot of people were trying to like, um, like hard code the knowledge into it, mm-hmm. and he kind of said like, why are you hard coding the knowledge into it? Mm-hmm. Just make something that can learn, 
teach it something and then you're going to achieve what he would call, you know, like the adult mind, like the mature mm-hmm. brain like that, which is a, a crazy insight for him wow. to have um, from way back then. And so, yeah, very much like AI, what we try to get it to is pretty much that, like you build um, some architecture mm-hmm. that is able to learn or gather patterns from mm-hmm. data, which is really what it does. It just gathers pattern. Mm-hmm. Like what ChatGPT does is just gather patterns about language. Mm-hmm. So the the way that they train it is you have something called pre-training mm-hmm. where you just feed it like, like a fairly fat chunk of the internet on there <laughs> you know like you just feed it like all this text data mm-hmm. right and what you want it to learn is language like mm-hmm. what it learns is grammar and mm-hmm. like the association between words and mm-hmm. like things that you mm-hmm. kind of take for granted mm-hmm. when like you read mm-hmm. and stuff but like it has to learn and on top of that it also just like learns information mm-hmm. one way i like to think about those language models is they're almost like a database, like mm-hmm. if you really think about it, but they're like a very fancy type of database mm. where in the the model has the parameters and the parameters is what it learned, essentially. So during the training process, um, what gets tweaked is the model parameters. So the you could say the information is somehow encoded mm-hmm. in those parameters, mm. right? And the way that you access that information is through a prompt. Yeah. Like, the way that you, like, you can think of it, like, you tell it, um, what is the capital city of the U.S. or something, mm-hmm. and then, like, Washington, D.C. comes out of it. But you take that, right? Look at Siri listening to me, like, <laughs> right now. Come on. <laughs> they're, they're always listening. So you take this uh, prompt of yours for whatever it is, you run it through the model, and then, um, you know, there's a lot of math and stuff that goes on. But essentially, like, what it's doing your prompt, it's saying, like, what parameters do we need to activate to extract that information? So your prompt is just a way for you to extract the knowledge that is already encoded in there. Wow. But what the model is doing is mm-hmm. finding what is the best representative way for me to encode that knowledge in there. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. So yeah. That's, <laughs> that's crazy, man. That It's like... You, you sometimes don't even think about how intricate this is. Yeah. This baby is like, she, she, this baby is, 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 it's, is, it's a, is, is a complicated baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've learned so much today, Jose, to be honest. I, I like. Well, you're a complicated, uh, not baby, adult now, but <laughs> it's, your it, brain is more complicated than yeah. tragic tea, so like. So what do you, so you said this is the year of profit. What do you hope that, like, <laughs> what do you hope, what, what's a positive thing that you hope for the future of AI? That we hopefully can help make it less, you know, bad. So, like... What are your hopes for AI? I always... um, I realize, like, I always really like technology because technology is a way in which human beings can use it to, like, make their lives better, Mm -hmm. right? So, like, we should be using this to help people. We should be using this to improve our society in some way or another, right? Mm -hmm. Um... And one of the things that I want to work on uh, with AI is almost, for lack of a better term, but like the self-improvement productivity AI type of stuff. Like, can you get the most out of it? (laughs) You see, that's why I didn't want to use the word self-improvement like that. But like, just um, can it aggregate the data in your life and then, you know, add some value to it in some form? Because I do think that the useful thing is we generate data every day. Like, you know, we have this podcast now where like, I wear I wear my watch all the time, mm-hmm. right? And like maybe I do exercise, I mm-hmm. eat something. Um, and so what I would say is, how can we? This is a technology that can be used for like incredible good. Mm-hmm. Now the thing is, there's always two sides mm-hmm. to the coin, and like, um, for example, like nuclear fusion can be used to have pretty much limitless power. Mm-hmm. Uh, we used it to make a really big bomb. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's like... You know, like, yeah. <laughs> you have a trade-off on either side. So one thing that I hope for the future is that we can use this to do, yeah. um, to, like, enrich, like, people's lives in that way. And, you know, I think GPT is an incredible technology. Like, mm-hmm. um, it's helped out me a lot. It's helped out a lot of people I know quite a bit. And I would say it's certainly a much bigger net positive than it is a net negative. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I just think, like we mentioned earlier, we mm. need to be mindful yeah. of how we tread. And we also have to be mindful yeah. as engineers, too. Like, I see people uh, working on, like, voice cloning things. And, you know, like, mm-hmm. I actually, like, wanted to do that at one point because my brother and I, mm-hmm. like, one of the things we were talking about, so, like, this mm-hmm. uh, podcast is in English right mm-hmm. now as we're talking, but, like, can we take this audio, translate it to other languages, mm-hmm. and then maybe it would be a cool fact if, like, Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the audio sounds uh, weird. Like, if we could clone your voice in a different language to, Mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, remain that. That's really cool. Opposite side of that is I can now clone your voice and make you say whatever you want. Yeah. And then use that as misinformation. So My biggest worry for AI at the moment is misinformation and stuff like that. So, yeah, for the future, I I just hope, you know, we can um, make AI with the best intentions so that we can get the most out of it. I want to work on, like, that productivity Mm -hmm. AI section. Um, Notion's really cool. I love Notion. Yeah. She, it, 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 it's helped me so much, so. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, yeah. Jose. I, I learned a lot today. I think oh, yeah. all the information that you gave is, like, literally gold. <laughs> and hopefully this can help either engineers to become more responsible or yeah. the AI rapper startups, like, think more on, like, the decisions and sort of, like, creative solutions they want to make and actually make a, a good informed decision on how we can use AI for better and for good. So now I'm just going to let you, you know, promote anything. How can people reach you so that they can pick your brain a little bit more or anything you want to promote as well? I mean, you can uh, follow me on LinkedIn if you want. It's just my name, Jose Pujol. And, yo, come to uh, come to the Init session. Well, I'm only going to be here until probably April mm-hmm. for in Miami. But, yeah, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. And shout, out, shout out to Init. Yeah, shout out Init. to Init. And shout yeah. out. And I would encourage everyone to like start their own AI communities at their schools, yeah. you know, if they want. If you have that fear of like, oh, but I don't know anything about this, you know, like, what are people going to think? What? Man, just do whatever. it. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. It's like, what's the worst that can happen? You can fail. All right. You know, at least you tried. <laughs> yeah. Uh, become a become the nerd. Yeah, Evolve. exactly. Don't, don't be afraid to, to become the nerd. Yeah. You guys, like, you get, I, I think that future you will definitely thank you like you will i've made a lot of really great friends Mm -hmm. from doing that and it's just been a huge net positive that's awesome thank you so much